Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, Traveling Road Show Edition. We had my 50-year class reunion last night, so if I sound a little hoarse, it's from talking to all these old friends. Had a blast. It was a huge success. It's fun to see people that uh, you've uh, gone to high school with 50 freaking years ago. So everybody does this. They look at you and they go, hi, and then their eyes just kind of go down and look at your name tag and go, Rick. So they pretend that they know you, but they got to double check and take a look at the name tag. So I was guilty of that as well. So it was a lot of fun. So what's going on in our market? I call it the trifecta of events that are affecting our real estate market right now. One of them is simply, once again, inventory, lack thereof, interest rates going up, and the debt ceiling. Those are the three factors right now that are affecting our market, and I'll show you what it's doing. Once again, it's kind of hard to predict going out more than two months, but we can take a look at what our market is showing us right now. And right now in the Arizona market, you can see here that the monthly average sales price is starting to plateau a little bit right here. And you can see that on a historical basis that we can expect that prices are going to stay right about here, if not start to come down just a hair like they did down here because it's seasonal. So our market is just going to slow simply due to good old Arizona weather. Nobody's out. Uh, volume is not too high when it's too hot. So that's what we're seeing now. And we expect that to be that way until October. Then things start to climb back up, just like you've seen down here in both sales and in prices. And, uh, and if we're looking here at active listings again, we're down almost at uh, week 2022, 2020 levels. And that's before we hit the breakdown here where where we were, you know, told to stay home. So it's kind of, you kind of have to ignore the rest of 2022 uh, where active listings spiked up like crazy because of the interest rate hike right here. So again, what's normal? We really don't know. Um, and then we're looking here at listings under contract have also reached kind of a plateau right here. They went up, they've been going up steadily since January and now they're starting to come down. And one of the reasons that they're coming down, folks, is, again, those three things I just alluded to. And one is that we just don't have enough listings for people to pick from. And number two, interest rates are bumping at 7% door right now. We're going to touch on that. And number three, there's just a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of bad news, potential bad news. When we look, we see here that this is nationally seasonally adjusted annual rate of existing home sales went down, just like what we saw here in Arizona. And it's interesting, it says here, I like this statement, it says, but it's worth remembering that the ultra low inventory is not just talking point for housing market cheerleaders. I think I was called that last week. It's legitimately suppressing sales numbers. Incidentally, it also stands as evidence that 2023 is nothing like 2008. And they're showing how our sales just, uh, well, this isn't showing it here, but our inventory is nowhere near what we had in 2008. But you can see, you know, stay home, flatten the curve, or we just took a dive bomb right there. And then the stimulus check started coming out. People wanted to move to other cities, out of the cities, into the suburbs. And the way real estate went with all that free money. Here's the existing home inventory here. And here's what he was alluding to back in 2008. And it's, it's right there. And we are right here. So inventory is indeed very, very low. And things are better for the new home market since home builders don't have to wait for home sellers to decide to move or refinance before those units come to market. So this is breaking ground in new construction, starting to come up, just kind of muddling around a little bit here. But the home builders are doing, are doing well. And the home builder confidence has been climbing in 2023. It was pretty low down here November and December, and quite honestly in January, but now home builder confidence is starting to climb up a pretty good clip. And it's climbing because they know that you can't find something in the resale market, so they're going to build you a new home. Now, here's the breakout. And you can see these two red lines here. And whenever you're tracking 10-year treasuries or mortgages, 
you'll hear the finance people and you'll hear Pat talk about it too, that we trade in a range and then we look and see if there's going to be a breakout. Did anything come above that current range that we were in? And sure enough, we did this past week. And I'm anxious to hear what Pat has to say about that. And it, uh, 10 year treasury broke out. And as you can see, it affected interest rates. And their commentary here on Mortgage News Daily says these breakouts mean that the market isn't oblivious to the risk that is not yet time for the big reversal for lower rates. They don't anticipate that coming. The saving grace is that the market isn't also isn't convinced rates need to be any higher than they were earlier this year or late last year. Sure, we may be breaking the ceiling of the more narrow, more recent range, but there's longer term consolidation that remains very much intact. This is a debate we'll fe we feel will take weeks or even months to resolve. And they're referring to this. Although we're seeing this little spike up and down here, we're within this range that's trending down. So that's what Mortgage News Daily is pointing out. Yeah, we're seeing some spikes up and down, but overall, uh, the market is trending long-term in a downward direction on the 10-year yield. So in the meantime, volatility can pop inside these ranges. There'll be ups and downs depending on data and events. Next week's biggest ticket in that regard is PCE inflation data on Friday and a slew of additional Fed speeches throughout the week have been moving the market. And a lot of them, the, the presidents of certain uh, um, areas have come out and said, they're telling the market, look, uh, we're not going to pull back. We're going to keep going until we hit our target. And they're basically, each person's waiting for the other one to blink. Now, there's also been some data out there that said that the banking crisis is the equivalent of a 50 to 100 uh, point bump in rates and that uh, that's affecting credit remains to be seen. And so the feds are basically telling the market, you know, don't, don't count on us uh, lowering rates or even staying flat anytime soon. So they're trying to use verbiage to tell the markets to, uh, you know, interest rates are not going down. So learn to live with it. But we really don't know what's going to happen. I'm really anxious to get Barry Habib on and see what's going on. But we also know that he was really predicting that rates were going to come down on May 10th because the inflation data would look good. Well, what happened? Here came this ugly banking crisis. And then on top of that, the debt ceiling talk. Now, this happens all the time. The debt ceiling, we approach it. There's doom and gloom. You're not going to get your Social Security check. Military is not being paid all of this stuff. So all the scare tactics are going to be out there while they're negotiating. And he, both of them are dug in, both parties. They're not going to budge. The other one's an idiot. No, I'm right. And this is going to go on. This is going to go on easily until the 1st of June. We might have an extension. We might reach a deal. Until then, the markets are going to be just a tad bit nervous. When markets are nervous, things usually don't move in favor of lowering interest rates in your direction. It they're looking for direction and substance. So the markets are going to bounce up and down, up and down, stock market and the bond market and interest rates until they get this resolved. So uh, if you're looking to lock your rate, if you're buying, then have a, a good conversation with your lender who's watching the charts and make sure that they know to advise you if you should lock or if you should hang in there waiting for rates to come down because it looks like it's going to be a daily event. And uh, we'll keep you updated here on this show. I will get back to my regular schedule now that I'm done with all the festivities up here. And we will be I will be back on Monday morning live at 830. And we'll be doing the Thursday show with the group and Pat on Friday. Until then, everybody have a great night. Get ready for a really interesting week. Take care.